Number 12 then from the 2006 Higher Maths Paper 2, an optimization question. And the two usual parts. Part A, arrive at this equation here. And part B, use this equation to find maximums and minimums. Well, first of all, what have we got here? There's some rectangle formed by bounding its edges, its top edge, by the line y equals 12, and its right edge by the line x equals 6. The other two edges rest on this inverse curve here. There's its equation, y equals 8 over x. Rest on some point in this curve, but not just anywhere, only between these two points. Now, that will matter for part b. But for just now, you have to arrive at a formula for the area of this, depending on the position of point p. Now, point P could be any point, so I'll just call that X, and its Y coordinate then has to fit the equation, so the Y coordinate is 8 over X, but it told you that anyway. So, what are the two sides of this so you can work out the area? Length times breadth, PS, for one mark. Well, PS goes from the point P to the point S, from X coordinate X to X coordinate 6, so PS is 6 minus X. That's a mark. RS, which of course is the same as QP, will be the difference in the Y coordinate. It's been a vertical line, so it will be 12 minus this Y coordinate. So it will be 12 minus, and in terms of X, because it did say express it in terms of X, so don't write 12 minus Y, because you just want one variable. Y is equal to 8 over X. And that's worth the second mark. That was part one. Part 2 was to arrive at this expression for the area. Well, the area is length times breadth, so it will be PS times RS. It will be 6 minus X times 12 minus 8 over X. Now, don't just jump straight into the answer, copying it down in case you made a mistake somewhere. Even though it's only worth one mark for this, at least show the multiplications involved. You've got 6 12s are 72. You've got 6 times this is minus 48 over x. You've got minus 12x. And you've got, that will cancel out to a plus 8, because the x's will cancel. So altogether you've got for a, and I'll say in terms of x, because I've only got x, not the y's anymore. I've got 80 minus 12x minus 48 over x. Now you get the mark. That's mark three. Now part B. Find the greatest and least possible values of A and the values of X for which they occur. So this is like an optimum value, but notice in this case there are limits here. You're only going from X equals one to X equals four. If it was the standard optimization question, you would say, right, you're only going to get an optimum value if there's some sort of turning point. Because without a turning point, it's either just going to increase forever or decrease forever. You're only going to have an optimum value if it takes a turn and comes back down, then that's an optimum value. Suddenly for a minimum value. So you might be expecting here, since it says what's the minimum maximum, for it to look something like this. So finding the stationary values of this would give you a maximum minimum turning point and that's what you'll state but that's only a maximum in its own little neighborhood afterwards answers get higher that may only be a minimum in its own little neighborhood there may be some other point where the answers can be lower and here because you're restricted in your x's there's a window you're looking through depends where that window is if the window was over here then the turning points would have no bearing at all on it. The maximum would be here, and the minimum would be here. In general, if you're looking for a maximum and minimum value in a restricted interval, if you're just looking through an interval of x's, you're not considering what happens on either side, then in general, looking through, drawing the curtains in on some function, may have it looking like this, in which case your extremes will happen on the boundaries. And the only time that they wouldn't happen on the boundaries would be if there was some sort of turning point in between. And then you'd have to consider what do you have on the boundaries and does this turning point exceed it? So that, that would be a minimum in this case and that would be the maximum.
out of the three possible values. And that's what you're going to do here. So differentiate this. Notice I've just written a here, the same as it is in the paper. I just wrote a of x before just to emphasize that it was a function of x alone, not x's and y's. But before I differentiate it, at this level, I think you better write that in index form. 8 is fine, minus 12x is fine, but I'll write that as minus 48x to the negative 1. Now I can differentiate it. So dA by dx. And writing that in an appropriate form, in an index form, is a mark. That's mark number 4. Strictly speaking, when you're used to differentiation, you can just differentiate that term by inspection without resorting to that, first of all. But here there's a mark for that. Then, differentiate. So, that'll become negative 12. Multiply by the power will make it negative 1 times negative 48 will be plus 48. Take 1 off the power. Power negative 2. That's worth a mark. Then, saying there'll be an optimum value, or a stationary value, whichever you like, I tend to go for optimum value, rather than stationary value when it's an optimum value equation, but it's really the same thing, means that dA by dx should equal zero. That's a mark, just for equating the derivative to zero. So, solving the equation, that means that negative 12 plus 48, and now I'm going to rewrite that as x squared. Put it into index form, by all means, in order to carry out a differentiation or integration. But if you're actually going to use it for an evaluation or an equation, put it back the way it was. So that should equal zero. Now there's only one mark for actually solving this for x. So the first step will be multiply that. Notice that x can't be zero, so it didn't apply in this case anyway because x was never zero. Multiply by x squared, and you've got negative 12 x squared plus 48 equals zero. It's quite a bit of work here just to get down to the value of x. So that's 12 x squared, just bringing that over to this side, equals 48. So x squared is divided by 12, 4. And in this case, I can safely say x is going to be just the positive root, because I'm only considering them on this side. Now, eventually, that's the seventh mark. Maybe I'll put a note here. X greater than zero. Now for some space, I'm going to move it all up here. Now I've written stationary at x equals two, because strictly speaking, I don't care what kind of stationary point that is, whether it's a maximum or a minimum, or even a point of inflection, because the evaluations will speak for themselves. Because what's happening here is, you're looking for a maximum or minimum in an interval x goes between 1 and 4. You could write that this way. x is in the interval 1 to 4. The square brackets means including 1 and 4. So the maximum and minimum should occur either 1 and 4 unless the value at a stationary point exceeds or goes below one of them, which means I've got to evaluate that now at three points. What's the value when x is 1? What's the value when x is 4? That'll give me a maximum minimum. But also what's the value when x is 2 to compare it to them to see if that deserves one of the crowns? So, what's the area when x is 1? Well, in the formula that will be 80 minus 12 times 1 minus 48 over 1, and that comes to 20. That's a mark. That's mark 8. Work out the area at 2. Well, that'll be 80 minus 12 times 2 minus 48 over the 2. And that'll be minus 24 minus another 24, so that's minus 48, 32. That's a mark. That's mark number 9. And work it out at the other end of this interval. The curtains are drawn in between 1 and 4. What's the answer at 4? Well, that'll be 80 minus 12 times 4 minus 48 over the 4. So that'll be minus 48 minus the 12 minus 60. That's a 20 again. Oh, there's a tie here. But nevertheless, that's a mark. That's mark number 10. So there's three marks just for knowing to evaluate it at those three points. But that is important in this question because it's an interval question, not just find the stationary point question. Now it's just a case of answering the question. So for the final mark, for the 11th mark, so I'll have to say, it said, what's the maximum value? So the maximum area is 
32 and it said here, let's just call it units, so units squared and that happens when x equals 2 and the minimum area that you get is 20 square units and that happens twice when x equals 1 or 4 when x equals 1 or x equals 4 now writing all of that gets the final mark